We are the Women of Women Matters internationally meeting of on regular basis. And we start with the latest one, Martini, because she is always in danger of falling out <laughs> of the Zoom room. So Martini, you check in first, okay? Okay. I am very pleased to be, to see all the faces and to be in this room again. Thank you very much. Um, uh, the time being is beautiful, Beatrice. I, I enjoy that you are um, going to a beautiful dance classes. And um, what am I doing? Oh, I made today, I made um, Fagen Senf from Fagen Senf. Mm. Lecker. Mit Wein und Apfelsaft und äh, Senf und äh, Chile und äh, also yeah, laute yeah. leckere Sache. Ja, yeah, in Englisch. Yeah. Love, oh ja, yeah, I would love to, um, to give you all a, a piece of, of, because it is delicious. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm giving a, a, to the uh, girl who has birthday tomorrow. <laughs> ah, Monia. Oh, it's me, it's me, it's me. Where I got the sun oh. uh, reading. He dies to me, it's my birthday. <laughs> but I've been day. celebrating since Saturday. And uh, we just I got a huge cake from my mother, from the mother-in-law of my second daughter. And I finished two pieces <laughs> and it is just, it was great, yeah. And we will, be, we will continue celebrating until Saturday. Uh, and hopefully there won't be a lockdown at that time because we invited almost 50 people. And uh, yeah, everybody said they come, so. <laughs> but time will tell. And I don't feel like 80. I don't know how much I feel. I feel like about 18, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So it's a busy time. And actually, what I really am engaged with is death, because I figured that at 80, you really should finally uh, face what's going to come whenever it will come. And so I'm trying to get prepared for the battle, battle. And there's a lot of interesting literature and from the Dalai Lama downwards. And particularly one book, uh, Soul Midwives. So how to uh, be a midwife for the soul of somebody who is dying. And that's, so it's a very interesting material, heavy. But today I went to an osteopath and she linked my feet and my head because my head was about this. And now I feel a lot better and I don't walk like a turtle anymore. I walk like a human being. So that's, uh, yeah, that's one of my birthday presents I got. <laughs> I pass on to Hanili. Thank you, Monia. Happy birthday for you. Wow. <laughs> You're so inspirational. I'm Martini, I was so glad you, you spoke about eating something, making something delicious. And I'm so happy that it's a time for watermelon in South Africa, fresh watermelon. Because it's so juicy. And I really got some, the first one I bought was just incredibly juicy and red and uh, just nourishes my soul. So I'm very grateful for that, that we are there now. And we had our first double rainbow, rainbow, double rainbow on Sunday, which we could see the whole one. So that was both of them. We could see both and we have pictures of them. So it was just also something amazing. And the other thing I want to share is that 4D mapping session that Heidi invited us to two weeks ago. And 
it was just incredible. My experience of it was just incredible. I, the, I had a very traumatic experience two days later. And it was so interesting how just going back into that energy put me right up again. So thank you, Heidi. It was really a blessing to be part of that. And I'm still stunned at what unfolded through that session and how it played out. Thank you very much. I'm complete and I'm passing to Victoria. Oh, watermelon and rainbows. Who could do better than that? <laughs> um, I am... Let's see, what am I doing? I'm starting to write uh, sort of by mistake. Well, not by mistake, but it's not with intention. Um, I, I, I'm doing, I've been doing a lot of intensive reading because um, this evening, I, I, well, two months in a row, I volunteered to um, facilitate the Harvard Book Club that we have here, the Harvard Alumni that are local. Well, actually, since it's been online, we have people now from all over the country, which is kind of fun. And um, I didn't choose the books, but uh, I, I always sort of lie in wait when there's a book that looks like I'm going to actually like it. So last month was Joseph Conrad, The Secret Agent, and I just love his writing style. And tonight, it's a brand new book. Um, I kept thinking of you, Monia, actually, you, you would really get a kick out of it. Um, it's called Borges and Me, and it's, um, it's by a, a, an English professor at Middlebury College in Vermont, um, who's a, apparently a very prolific writer. I've never heard of him before, but he, the list of books is massive. So um, he's probably in his, maybe, maybe he's about 70 years old now, I, I would guess. Anyway, he, um, he discovered his sort of his true calling through an inadvertent um, meeting with Jorge Luis Borges, who was always one of my favorite writers. Um, even when I was a child and didn't have any clue what he was writing about, I just loved his, his very, I, don't know, I can't explain his writing. I don't know how many of you um, have read his work, but it's just fabulous. Anyway, so this, this book that we're talking about tonight is, um, is, is, a, is a journey that the two took together, this young man who was only 22 years old and um, with the great writer, Jorge Luis Borges. But the funniest thing about it is that he didn't, even, he didn't know who he was. I mean, he knew he was a writer and that everybody revered him, but he hadn't read a single word by him. And one of his advisors, um, he was in Scotland studying, even though he's American, um, was entertaining Borges because he was translating his poetry from the Spanish. And then he had to go to care for a, a sick friend in London and call this young man and said, can you look after Borges for a week? So this book, which is um, about 40 years after the fact, Borges died in the, in the 80s, um, is about this journey that they took and Borges was blind. So I love the whole idea that of a blind man wanting to see, see Scotland and this journey with this very young man um, who is still a virgin, but is in love with a girl, but he's awkward. I mean, this man who's just kind of hardly formed this young man and this very, very ancient um, philosopher and writer and poet who's blind and who is constantly peeing on the front left wheel of the car. And I, I mean, it's, it's just, it's so fabulous. And so anyway, I, I didn't mean to get off on the story, but I'm just, I have, because I'm talking about tonight and leading the conversation, I'm, and I haven't finished the book yet, of course. I always like to read everything intensively. So it's really fresh, but um, I don't know why I thought of you, Monia, but, um, <laughs> But I think, I don't know, it's just, it's such a humorous book. Somehow, I don't know, it made me think of you because it's, it's, it's hilarious, but it's also really philosophical at the same time. And it's just, um, so anyway, I, I recommend it. So that's, uh, that was a very long check-in, but um, it just made me, it made me think about sort of you, well, it's appropriate for Monia's birthday, I think, the, the, the sort of the span of life and how, maybe that's why I thought of you, Monia, because it's being, Old in years, but young in spirit. What is and the title? It's called Borges and Me. I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you the um, the oh, information. Okay. Yeah, the the art. The writer's name is J J A Y Parini. Parini. The um, 
and, but he's American. Anyway, um, oh, there it is, sorry, I'll, yeah. Thanks, Hanali. So, sorry, that was a very lengthy, I got too excited. <laughs> um, I'm going to pass to um, Beatrice, who's the whole reason we're here at this different hour. Boy. <laughs> Thank you, Bo. Thank you, everybody, for, for adjusting your schedule. I, I'm very grateful, because I, um, I think I s might have told the group last week that I have decided to um, take my dancing more seriously again and to really try to pursue it as a, I'm not, I'm not letting go of the other things that I'm doing in my life. I'm still doing all the work that I'm doing, but, but I want to really bring dance back to center stage, I guess, yeah. of my life. Um, which also means I'd, I'd like to work towards auditioning for projects and performing again more seriously and really get into the dance scene in New York. Um, so this is week three of that decision. Um, I've been taking two classes a week. I might amp up to three classes a week, hopefully soon. I've been mostly taking ballet because there's a studio really close by. Um, and it works in the mornings, but this is this Monday mornings is the one modern class I can fit into my schedule and modern is my great love. So I'm very grateful to everyone for, for letting me, <laughs> so I don't have to do it every other week. I can actually do it every week. Um, so I've come back from that. I'm still sweaty, um, a little bit <laughs> rushed home. Um, uh, what else is going on in my life? Um, very busy, I'm, but I'm very stimulated by everything that I'm doing. Um, and I've got uh, yet another job prospect landed in my lap, um, working for another arts nonprofit. <laughs> um, but this one is where they're working on creating a festival that um, is centered around uh, women's uh, theater and filmmaking and it's the 25th anniversary of this festival and it was actually I found out later um, I was connected to this person through it, someone else that I work with but as we were talking he he looked at all my he looked at my website and he looked at my work and I hadn't told him that I work on grief I had just told him more generally what I'm interested in but he looked at my work and he watched my thesis show and he was so moved, he had to call me immediately. I was busy, but I got a voicemail from him saying how moved he was by watching my work. And then he told me that this festival actually was founded in honor of his daughter who died at age 22, 25 years ago. Um, and she, I don't know much about her. I'm, I'm gonna meet with him again uh, soon this week to talk, but she must've been in the theater arts, I don't know. Um, but he wanted to rather, he told me, he said, rather than trying to find closure of, at this death, he wanted to um, really continue her life and legacy through this work and through this festival. And that's the whole point of the festival, which I didn't know when I was given, you know, when, when this project was sent my way. And I don't even think the person who sent it my way knew that backstory. So it was one of those things where, where we already were connecting and then we found a deeper layer of, of connection. So I'm, we'll see where it goes. I, I don't have time for another job, <laughs> but I'm also very excited about the work that he does. He does, the whole organization is about doing theater and art and that is um, changing the world, really like really talking about the issues that don't get talked about and really being, you know, uh, socially conscious and um, really from the heart um anyway so that's my long-winded update but um yeah and then my children the, my children <laughs> the children that I take care of that I consider my children are an absolute delight um especially the youngest one who's turning four uh in a week and a half um and so several times a week I see him I'm, I see him like every other day um I get to be a four-year-old I get to play we're building pillow forts and doing experiments which basically just means putting a bunch of stuff in a bowl of water and stirring it together and seeing what it turns into um so that's been a joy in my life as well um anyway things are good I guess is my conclusion <laughs>
who hasn't gone yet? Uh, Gail Chad. Yeah, I'm in the middle of <laughs> the project I was talking about last time. So it's an appreciative inquiry process in a firm, uh, in a bio catering firm. And to, yeah, get their culture like explicit, <laughs> uh, which is already great. And, and, and then to, to find out, yeah, to create the future on that basis to, to so it's yeah it's just great and we have um out of 40 38 did interviews with each other and the other two we are finding a way because uh, they have language issues so we are talking to the to the um person who is in charge of the refugees in that community and and seeing how to how to deal with that and and how to include them in in a way that that works for them yeah so so i'm pretty proud that we <laughs> got that far and uh so we have another group call group no we don't have do calls i'm there <laughs> group meetings uh on site and and at the end of November, there is a two day event coming up with everybody to really create that manifesto for, for them on which they build the future. Yeah. So that's quite a bit of work and that's why I couldn't come, Haneli, sorry. Um, yeah, so I was pretty busy lately. That's yeah, and another project is starting for half a year. Uh, yeah, I saw my family two weeks ago. I don't know if I told you about. No, we can't hear you anymore. There's something with the, there's, no, we cannot hear you. There's something with the microphone. something happening in the it was a bit strange also before but now okay so i am assume that you have finished i find it uh nice that you people who are very busy still come and see us in in this group that's very nice uh so i'm the last for check-in yeah my days i don't know where they go they are always and then it's evening you know and I don't seem to have worked in the sense as I worked before on the computer, sitting on the computer, blah, blah, blah. I do a lot with the children and I like it. And I very often am cooking with one of her of the children and before they were here and we studied a little bit the three Italian songs, Arrivederci Roma and, and stuff like this and trying with singing also teaching them a little bit of Italian. And I really enjoy this phase of my life because also there are so many children. It re reminds me of my, of my own childhood when we were so many and the organization and family. And so it's, it's somehow familiar <laughs> to me. And I like it. So far for me, uh, finally it rained, you know, that's what I need to say, finally two months in, in late, but it did. And my vegetable garden is really good. A lot of salad and the first broccoli are coming and I'm enjoying that too. So for today, I heard two topics. One would be something like synchronicity, things that happen because they happen and they seem all to fit together. I heard it some time and the other one is, uh, it might uh, interest or not interest, was Monia said, uh, to come to terms with it, what happens after we, you know, it can be earlier than 80, but after 80, it's probably more probable that it will be coming. So it is a topic which also interests to Beatrice, although she is far from 80. So we 
we can choose another um, suggestion. Gertrude, let's see if you if you are here uh, with the audio. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Now we can hear you. Okay. What 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 do you want to talk about? Uh, the synchronicity thing. I would like to. I mean, it's a nice topic, and I wonder how many experiences you have or not how many but which ones more than how many uh, so beatrice you talked about it that synchronicity because just now this happened do you want to, uh, to expand a little bit on that and then we go um i mean i think that's a big I don't believe in coincidences in the sense of, of, of things just kind of happening at random. I, I really, th th these kinds of things feel meant to be in a, in a grander meta universal kind of way. Um, there's been a lot of things like that in my life. Um, I mean, even, you know, the other jobs that I have, the other nonprofit work that I'm doing with Matt, you know, the reason I'm connected to him is because his partner, Ken, was um, randomly in San Diego. I don't know if I've told this story, story before, but this was years and years and years ago. Ken, and they live in New York, Matt and Ken, and Ken was in San Diego for some unknown reason. I don't, I mean, I don't remember the reason and was on the same street corner as my mother and my grandmother and my grandmother almost walked in front of a car moving car and ken pulled her back and they started talking and that turned into a friendship and connected to my mother and then my mother connected to ken's partner matt and they became friends and then when i went you know applied for graduate school i connected with matt because he he works at nyu and um you know, now fast forward many years and, and Ken died last year and, and Matt wanted to honor, continue to honor his memory um, by doing this work and invited me to help him start this organization with him to do that. Um, I don't know, but it, it's, it's, it's just things like that where, you know, if Ken hadn't been at that street corner, what would I be doing today? You know, like <laughs> to me, that kind of thing is, is, is crazy that it's, it's, one little that's the butterfly effect you know one little action or one little moment of decision of meeting someone or being in a certain place at a certain time and it can alter the entire timeline of somebody else's life <laughs> um so yeah i think it's it's interesting i think also you know the people the people that kind of resonate with who you are tend to magnetically attract to you too. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. I don't know. That's my brain is I, <laughs> dancing and not yet eating and not yet coffee. And so a <laughs> little bit fuzzy. <laughs> I will pass along to the group. Well, I know I've, oh, do you want to go ahead, Henley? You go ahead, Victoria. Oh. Um, I know I've said this many times, but I, I never cease to be amazed by it. Um, if it hadn't been for the fact that the centering prayer, a, a contemplative community here in San Diego sent me an email at the very beginning of the pandemic that a famous um, Christian mystic, Cynthia Bourgeau, was, had to give a retreat in South Africa but it was now on Zoom instead of live. And so the, my community here was sending out an email saying that this had happened and because of the pandemic. And so now people could sign up for it. If it hadn't been for me, because I, I, I admire Cynthia Bourgeau making, as you all know, the really difficult decision to wake up at five o'clock in the morning every morning. <laughs> 
for three or four days because um, Cynthia, because of course the whole South African community that invited Cynthia was doing it at a, you know, whatever time they had planned to do it. So for us in America, it was five in the morning or in, in the, on the West Coast. If I hadn't decided I would get up in the middle of the night virtually for this, this retreat online, and it was my first Zoom experience, I wouldn't be here today with you because the retreat with Cynthia led to me suddenly thinking, because Cynthia mentioned something about she was going to be at another, speaking at another um, online event a few months later, and it was all on her website. So I looked up her website. I found that she was going to give a lecture for SAND, the SAND conference. And at the SAND conference, a community was created, but out of hundreds of people, I think, that, that took that that were that attended virtually, um, I just saw this message by this woman who said that she was giving a lecture at an integral conference and if anybody was interested to get in touch with her. So we got in touch and then we found that we had, um, again, synchronicities in terms of, um, you know, I'm American, I was married to um, a European and Austrian and, and she was German and married to an American and we both lost our husbands and, you know, we both were musicians and just, you know, and so that's how Heidi and I met and that's why I'm here now. So it's, I think, yeah, I don't believe in coincidences either, but, but also I believe in the like an old a dear friend of mine who just passed away this summer, who was a, um, a very, very devout Catholic. She said, I've learned in my long lifetime, she was, she was almost 90 when she died. She said, I've learned not to say no. <laughs> she said, I've learned one thing in my 90 years, it's not to say no. She said, when somebody asks me something or, I, or I'm led to some information about something or about a person or whatever, she said, my natural instinct is, you know, to protect myself from being overwhelmed by too much to do. And she said, but over all these decades, I've learned that if I don't say no, sure enough, it's an impulse from the Holy Spirit. I mean, she was a Catholic, so that's how she phrased it. And she said, and if I follow the impulses of the Holy Spirit, I always end up where I'm supposed to be. She said, whatever it leads to, I have to not knowing, just go in and follow, follow the impulse and it's, it, that's where I'm meant to go. So that's my take on it. And um, thank you, Heidi, for, for being Heidi. <laughs>
also lead other people to help other people to come out of their boxes if that's something that we want to do. So it was just fascinating. Um, for me, I get into flow if I were, if I follow you talk about the impulse, um, Victoria. It's for me, it's about it's also the impulse. It's something calling me. And, and when I'm not following that, I, I can clearly see the disruption and the, that I'm not in flow. And then, then it's much harder to do whatever I need to do. So if I simply just follow that, that impulse, these and, I, and I've we're busy creating an app to help people to, to actually follow that impulse on the app and to also see where the synchronicity points and there's relationship points and there's power nodes on it. But it's to help us to, if we're not, if it's difficult for us to notice these synchronicities that we can see where, where the energy is strong, where it's flowing strong. And then we know that's where the life force is going within us as well. That it's something that's alive, it's life affirming. So there's beauty in it, there's energy in it. So I love this topic. Thank you, Heidi. I have so many. <laughs> examples of synchronicities in my life and how it completely took me onto a different path as well that if I didn't follow it, that impulse certain things would just not come into my path and then to learn just to trust the process because it's a process and there's so much fun in it as well to give you another example of this morning I went on my morning walk this morning and it was drizzling a little bit during the night and I decided to follow a new route and I, I was, um, as I went into the route, the first street's name is exactly the name of somebody that I'm busy doing some leadership work with, who's in the USA. And as I followed that road, because I've never been in that neighborhood before, and as I followed the road, there was another street with the surname of the person who I'm meeting on Thursday. <laughs> as, it was just incredible. It's like, it, and then it, there was also, a, a block of apartments and it was called Little, Little Siesta. And what we're co-creating with this person with the leadership stuff is to just to give people a little bit of a siesta throughout their day, just to come and explore something else that they can just also relax, but also expand their perceptions and explore other possibilities. It was just incredible. So as I walked, the street names were all directing me on because earlier this morning I was thinking, should I go? Should I really put a lot of energy into this leadership stuff with this person? And yeah, the universe is showing me directly this is the path to go from a very physicality point of view. The street names. It was just incredible. So I had to smile because I couldn't say that um, it was not all aligned. Thank you. I'm complete. Thank you, Hanavi. And um, you said following the impulse. But last time, I think it was last time or the one time before, you, the, you told us about the synchronicity, which a decision from somebody else, so our governments or whatever strange um, uh, order giving entities, said that you couldn't go to Germany. And because you couldn't go to Germany, something had opened up for you, which you really like that it had opened up. So it's not only the impulse in you, but it's also collaboration from who knows who, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, the, um, I've mentioned it many, many times, I think here, the, Conrad's term, the, the jokes of the angels. And that was one of the reasons he, he called it jokes of the angels, that it is the collaboration, like you said, Heidi, it's, it's the combination of being, I mean, he said that when he, when he was director of the Albertina, every morning when he walked into the office, he asked his, his secretaries, he had a whole office just of secretaries, and he would say, okay, what's, um, what's the daily miracle? What's the daily problem? And then he said, what's the daily miracle? To keep them focused on the positive and, and to keep them alert. He's, and he always believed that every day was full of miracles. And it was only you know, just a matter of being having your eyes open and being on the lookout and being receptive. 
you know, because most people go through life with this kind of blinded vision and they're very oriented on their plan, their own plans and they're not open to whatever's coming at them and what things are falling into place. And so I think it, yeah, it's the collaboration of, of the universe, if you will, and but also our own willingness to follow whatever impulses are coming into our own spirits or minds. Minds or bellies. <laughs> Especially if it's the Feigen Zen from Martini <laughs> or your fresh vegetables. Yeah. Or the watermelon. <laughs> Even as we speak, I'm, I'm that could have been my check-in. I have a huge cauldron on the stove right now of um, an enormous, I had a package of dried bordelotti beans that needed to be cooked. And um, so it's it's this big cauldron of, um, of soup with all kinds of vegetables and fresh herbs and things. It smells really good. So um, it'll probably be indigestible, but it's worth it. <laughs> There are a few musicians here, and I just want to share something that I've written in my little book about. Um, I was in 2016, I was asked by an uh, online university to do a self mastery course for all these students. And then I sat for four months to, and this thing just came into being. And I wanted to add music to it. So one day I was sitting um, wherever at the time where I was, and I was, and the songs would just come into my mind. And there were 13 threads in this journey. And, it, and the songs would just come into my mind. And as I'm doing that, a friend of mine from the US, she's, she lives in, in the Sacramento area. She, is, she's a, she plays the, um, the harp and she has three harps. But I didn't know she had three harps. I just knew she played the harp. But we were just connecting because we did the, connected once in the blue moon and um, so I told her about my day, that these songs just came in. And each song, and some of the songs I didn't know, so I had to go and Google them. And they were each fitting the, these, um, these 13 threads. And then she said to me, um, you know I play the harp, but at that moment I didn't. I still didn't know she plays the harp, because we never spoke about it. So she said, I actually have three here with me. And the one she's traveling with all the time, wherever she goes. And intuitively, I said to her, can you go and fetch one? And she didn't know anything that was in this journey. And it turned out to be a year journey. It's actually not a short thing. It's quite, it's quite an intensive journey. And she went to fetch her heart, but she knew nothing about what was in each thread. She didn't even know the names of each thread. And I would say the first thread. And she would intuitively start playing a brand new melody on her harp. And it resonated with every single one except one. So out of the 13, only one didn't resonate with me. Because she asked me, Did it, does it resonate with what's in there? And the others were spot on. I still get the shivers of how that happened because it was not planned. I didn't know at that moment, at that time that she's playing the harp and that we were sitting, and I, Realized, I discovered that synchronicity is between people as well. And like you said, uh, Victoria, it's a magnetizing force. It, um, there's much written about it as well, of that space that's created. And because of the type of connection and, and trust of that connection, these things are possible, even on such a level. I was just stunned because I still have all those recordings of her playing the, the harp, and she only had to redo one because it didn't really resonate with the topic. So when I then shared the topics with her of each thread, she couldn't believe it. She couldn't, she couldn't believe this, that it was so aligned and harmonious and synchronized with what was inside of each. And she still today doesn't know what's inside each one. It was just incredible. It was just pure magic. I'm just thinking of um, how people confuse uh, like the impulses that come up in that synchronistic um, universe <laughs> um, with 
something that comes up in anger or like the impulses that come up when you're on adrenaline <laughs> and and just have these like survival things at hand the the fight flight flight freeze and i know some people that think that's the same you know i just had to be authentic i just had to go with my gut feeling or we know a public person who you know, <laughs> thinks that, that way so um that that's for me the to distinguish those two is also important to to be in that state of opening up to to this um yeah to to have the distinction between the state of of adrenaline what we call red and the flow state <laughs> so so that's um yeah that gets mixed up often do you have uh, an indication what might be the difference some some factors which make the difference a part that you feel that you are in flow and um or you feel that you are triggered when you are conscious you might realize it but you know you send there, there's something up. when uh like anger um frustration things like that come up then it's probably <laughs> not not in that mode and fear i mean the german the word angst comes from enge enge means narrow so it's it's like pressing something together instead of feeling expanded so um Yeah, when I when I'm looking at my parents uh, when they were about to die, then my mother expanded more and more, and it was just uh, almost joyful to to see her despite the, the stroke and not being able to talk. But she was so happy to have her children around, and my father was like. Uh, yeah when you in the face of death to expand that's one part <laughs> and 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 the other one is shrinking in the face of fear so, yeah so, so i would say it's it's a matter of expansion or contraction and those lower feelings like go with them and immediately <laughs> go with them or go with the flow i think that's that's a complete difference and and i also uh, physi physiology wise um when you're in in a busy mode you can deal with maybe 2000 impulses from the outside um and when you're in flow mode, you have 40 million or so. I don't know exactly that. The, so there are different authors. Uh, but you have, you can deal with all these impulses from inside, outside. So it's, it's there's so much more uh, available for you, for you, for me. I mean, you as a general. Uh, yeah, so. So that, that's and and you remember maybe the the, the question um, what if everything we need is already here <laughs> yeah so that's the state in which the access grows and I have one one little uh, story um, when Victoria said um, with the going with the miracle, we had one in our eye training, a, a, a boss of a firm with three, three daughter firms. And so he had to go there once a month. And he said, I'm like the Jerusalem uh, complaining wall. <laughs> I don't know the, the exact phrase in English. And so, well, I thought it was part of my, my job, but then 
I, I just didn't want to go on like that. And I said, okay, what's good? What ha happened? What's good and new from the last time? And everybody paused because they were not dealing, <laughs> not expecting that. And then one started and the whole complaining atmosphere shifted within a minute or two, just asking those questions. So that's my two cents. Um, putting all together what I heard and uh, drawing on my Jungian experience, it looks like a synchronicity is something we are filtering out of the whole, because as you, as Gertrude said, everything is always available. And in a flow move maybe, or in a flow state, we are able to filter what is now fitting for us. This is what I sort of drew of all your contributions. But uh, Victoria, what really interests me is how come you are preparing your soup, not in a pot, but in a cauldron? Are you a witch? <laughs> if it weren't too heavy, I'd show it to you. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's huge. It's because <laughs> it's really, Beatrice knows um, it really is a cauldron. Um, <laughs> Because uh, I make soup so rarely that when I do make it, it's massive beyond all human conception. It always starts out in a pot. Um, last overnight, I soaked the borlotti beans, um, and then but once the vegetables started being added, that that pot was soon totally full, and it had to be transferred to the cauldron as I expected. <laughs> So there's plenty for all of you if I could if I could share it. And um, I know I, someday we have to all bring it the watermelon and the zenf and the, <laughs> the marmalade and the fresh vegetables and the soup. All I have growing here is uh, rosemary. That's it. And that's just because my neighbor, my next door neighbor, he planted it to make some kind of a boundary between our properties so it wasn't planted as an as necessarily as an act of goodwill <laughs> the cauldron i i never suspected you of being a witch <laughs> <laughs> but I've, i have never heard anybody cooking in a cauldron apart from witches so <laughs> like terry pratchett uh, writes about them. Martin. Well, it was, to, oh, sorry. It was just Halloween here. So maybe I also oh. have cauldron, which is on the brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Martini, your synchronicities. Um, yes. I, I wanted to, uh, I listened very good to you and I am very pleased what um, came on the table and I feel very comfortable if I am in this mood. And if I am not in this mood, I know that it will come again. So it makes me really relaxing. And I can take whatever it is. If it is a, a good time or a bad time, I have learned to be relaxed with the situation. And I liked it very much when uh, Victoria said, um, what problems are today? Yeah, um, my, my husband has made um, uh, um, Verbesserungswesen. Um, I don't know how uh, Kaizen is, it is called, and it is if there are prop, there are no problems anymore. It is not good because uh, problems are a, a challenge that we can be very creative. And uh, I have all the times in my work 
uh, problems, how to solve this. How do I do this? I, I don't know. And uh, if I am present, there's the solution is coming. And this is what makes you so um, relaxed and so satisfied, a deep satisfaction. And I think this is the biggest present we can we, we can have this is I, I always said it some uh, uh, once it is a thanksgiving at the moment and 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 then and there can come uh, some problems again and I, I can face them and I think it is a beautiful that that we brought this topic because there are Okay, there are a lot of problems, but we are creative, you know, and this is so beautiful that we can find a solution. Thank you a lot. <laughs> yeah, and I want to share also something because I'm noticing, you know, I started out as a good Enya type four, always seeing problems and being worried about everything and everywhere and so on. And in the last few years, I'm noticing um, a softening that I have, I tell me when I go into problem mode, I tell you, yeah, 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 it's okay, be quiet, this is it's fine. And so uh, I come to this, uh, at least since a year and a half or two that I'm staying here and say, okay, what will come will come. And now I have the family here and who knows what else. And this weekend there will come uh, a couple an Englishman and a German lady, and they want to create somewhere in Umbria uh, 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 some community, and maybe there will be collaboration or something. Who knows, you know? But I'm sort of saying, ha, huh, okay, let's see what's coming. Some other people might go away, others will come. Who knows? And I'm not worried about that anymore, that I have to plan and do this and only this and not anything else, no? So that's like a freeing thing. And whenever I want to go back into any type four mode, I say, mm -mm, no, <laughs> let's, let's be quiet. And you know, and it's coming up a curiosity. Who knows what will come? And this is really, I'm, I'm excited about this development, but I'm as old as I am, you know, I haven't been all the time like this. So uh, I'm glad. And I'm glad to have you to talk about these things, you know. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what will happen next. Anneli, you wrote this? Yeah. Yes, uh, it, op it opens up synchronous that we, be we begin to notice synchronicities, which we might be oblivious to. If we just ask such questions, uh, what else is possible? And when we're feeling stuck, for example, then it opens up a new, uh, it's like a stream of energy that can, that's possible to be able to birth on earth and the possibility, it just opens it up. That's a good question. And it's a little bit referring to what uh, Gertrude said, no? When you are in fear, uh, synchronicity is, won't come but when you are in trust or in openness and curiosity for instance no and in in, in yeah in trust i think uh, it's also and there we come to spirituality in many ways no then things can happen and sometimes it's really curious what's happening little things but oops <laughs> Ketra, do you want to say uh, yeah i i just have a question um for me, a neagram means not that I change my my number, but that I I don't know if the right name is redeem it, that it's it's kind of it's the 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 other form of it. It's it's not having me anymore, but it's my personal expression and. And I, I thought what's the redeemed or whatever that word is, a form of the four. For me, um, somebody said I'm a, I'm a nine. Many people said I'm a nine. I don't 
really know. But when I heard it was Pope the 23rd, <laughs> who was a redeemed nine, I thought, well, that's nice. <laughs> I go with that. So this, yeah, so. Well, the is, uh, sorry, oh. but about the Enneagram, there is an excellent, I don't know whether they still have it, uh, by Wilbur and um, Horny, I think her name is. And she, uh, she collected people of the same Enneagram tribe and uh, showed them that what they considered to be their weakness was actually their strengths. And that was the solution. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and, and telling oneself that this is not the mode I want is an excellent way, way to handle <laughs> it as well. Um, I'm wondering, uh, Oh yeah, we, we talked about Enneagram already, didn't we? I don't think in this scope, but I, I oh, think we could oh. talk about it. Who, who knows Enneagram? Um, I just wanted to say, I've been, I've been working, well, not working, but um, I, I did an Enneagram retreat with, um, at the very beginning of the pandemic and the woman who led it is one of the, um, she's, gone through all the various modalities of study and she was at the Esalen Institute for many years and um but she she just has found the Enneagram for her to be the most productive mode of of like like transforming your life and um and just the so anyway we formed a kind of community some of us they're all women by the way and um I mean that in this little group this little sort of um core group anyway I was just thinking as you were talking I thought it would be if if you if you thought it would be a good idea Heidi and well and everybody but um she's she's really a wonderful woman and she she's just so full of heart and and um and a very very brilliant very intuitive that maybe I could um invite her um she lives in I think in North Carolina or South Carolina she has she lives in isolation now on the farm she she's older and so she could retire she taught at universities for many years and um but she for me she's um because I was always suspicious of these systems mm -hmm. um you know where everything has to be this or that and and even with the integral I'm, I'm so glad now to have like a living living sort of example of what what it can lead to, um, because just looking at the charts with the colors and things was eyes was eyes for me very off putting because it seemed too. I, I'm always suspicious of things that are too careful, too well organized. <laughs> but um, but what Christine is her name, um, Christine King, she just published a book actually on the Enneagram because she wants to make it totally accessible and fun for people. So it's like a coffee table book, and it's. Um, it's, it's a book with, it's like a picture, it's a picture book actually, <laughs> where she took photographs. Um, she had people um, model the different characteristics of the different Enneagram types, both the, you know, the positive and the negative or the shadow and the um, light or whatever. And um, to make it sort of more accessible. And then, I mean, she, she has this very, you know, high level, um, understanding of it but she she said she she had this now that she's older she wanted to sort of find a way that to make it really something that's friendly and that's um something that anybody can get something from derive from and then if they're and then and then in the back she has like a glossary and the explanations and things but um but anyway yeah i could if i could if that's okay i could write to her and see if she'd like to join us sometime um mm -hmm. She, she's just a wonder a beautiful person too i mean i just love her she's and she's very generous she says that um she her biggest struggle is is um now is asking or accepting payment even like she's um so she said now she's decided that if it's something that she really doesn't want to do but somebody really wants her to do it then she'll then she'll accept a fee <laughs> But if she wants to do it, that's the last thing she 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 can't connect to the I don't know. But it was something very charming because I thought that's how I feel too. That um, 
you know, if I'm doing something from love, it's, it's a different impulse than sort of a, um, you know, work or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So I'll do that. I'll, that I think it would be great. Yeah, that would be nice. And from synchronicities, we go to Enneagram. I, for me, Enneagram was very important. I met it about 16, 17 years ago, and I understood a little bit about myself. And then later last year came also the archetypes. Did we talk about the archetypes of the soul in this call? I don't, I don't think so. No, that would be nice to do a little bit about typologies. Anneli, uh, which, uh, uh, which typologies are familiar to you? I think I'm, a, if I can, I did it many years ago. I can't, I think I'm a seven. That yeah, no, also, uh, if you know, there are several, uh, several typologies, no? Uh, uh, Enneagram is one, but there are others. Oh, you mean like Myers bricks and those type of? For instance, yeah. Uh, my, you know there's that? lots of, yeah, there's lots of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So we might do a, a circle of different um, typologies. That would be good. Uh, also, Gertrud? Yeah, I, I, I second that. Uh, and I would, uh, the mayor's breaks, I, there are so many people that talk about it, and I still don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What the <laughs> typology uh, is. So, so if we have somebody here who knows it, take over and, and do one session or two well, <laughs> and, well, and uh, to invite that person would be really great and i have yeah. to go soon so okay so i would love to so otherwise i just jump off I'd yeah i just to wanted to say quickly um christine king who's the my enneagram friend um she actually started because she's been through everything in her career she started with Meyer briggs and then she realized its limitations. That's her story. And that's how she moved into the Enneagram. That, um, so she's very knowledgeable in that too. I think she, she taught at the university's graduate school, like as, I guess, I don't know, where do you teach that in psychology? I don't know. But anyway, um, she could probably t t you know, delineate the differences and um, the pros and cons. And then as for archetypes, I, there's another fabulous woman um, that I did an archetype uh, workshop with um and she's well yeah so i can I, i'll have to try to dig her up um, a digger up she, hopefully she's not under yet. <laughs> <laughs> so i thank you for that i i loved our session about the synchronicities and maybe another synchronicity is that is leading us to the to the typologies Thank you, everybody. We do still a check out, a short check out. And um, yeah, who wants to start? Monia? You look like it. <laughs> oh, I was just thinking. I, for me, it's a round session, and I'm looking forward to the typologies. And uh, yeah, that will keep us busy for some quite some time. Thank you. I pass on to whoever feels. Should we sing happy birthday to Hunt? No. To <laughs> Not yet, it's tomorrow. We have to sing it in, in synchronicity. Yeah, that it's very difficult tomorrow. To At six o'clock, <laughs> we will sing everybody for you. Happy birthday for you, everybody in their own place, and you will listen. <laughs> uh, yeah. Name, so I take the it, it brings a bad luck when, uh, when we say it before, you know? That's a yeah, little, little bit of superstition. <laughs> Get <right. laughs> If you think it's superstition, it's not. If you think it's not, it is. <laughs> 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 so I'm looking forward to to those typologies. I, I really think that that's a that's a pretty good thing. Yeah. So, and um, thank you for this interesting <laughs> conversation today and it's so great to see you uh, martini again and monia all the best for <laughs> yeah many healthy years to come 
So I'm popping off. Just listen another two minutes or so, and then I have to Yeah, go. I think the check out we should give over because otherwise it takes too long. But I see Hanely is. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the topic, Heidi, because I just my, myself enjoy it when it just goes into that space of flow and hear stories of synchronicity and to see how it transforms people's lives is for me incredible always. And also now stepping into this, um, these things like Enneagram and the likes, also looking forward to that. Thank you, ladies. And thank you, Martini, for starting with that beautiful dish of yours. I'm still like, my mouth's like, mm, my imagination. I'm seeing also your cauldron, Victoria. So I'm like, so I'm, it's, it's night here. So it's almost dinner time. We have had power outages three times a day now um, for the next week. So quick, we'll have to do something before the power goes out. So thank you for that, everyone. It just me, reminds me of the power within us. And I'm, I, I'll give over to Martini. Yes, I'm very pleased to give you the recipe, but I cannot do it now because I don't know how to handle this, but I will send it to all. It is really beautiful with wine and uh, apple juice and, and um, a, a, um, a chili, chili. It's very uh, hot. Yeah, okay. And uh, thank you very much for this beautiful uh, being together. And I look forward for uh, the, uh, we, we have all our experiences with the Enneagram and with our soul. And I think it will be uh, great if we uh, share this together. And I give over to Beatrice. It's so wonderful to see everybody and to see you, Martini. And thank you for making it possible for me to dance today. I am so hungry listening to everybody. <laughs> I was anyway hungry, now I'm hungrier. So I'm excited to <laughs> feed myself after this call. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to pay attention to the daily, the daily problem and the daily miracle. Um, what a great, what a great way to, to live each day. So, and, and thank you to all, thank you to the universe <laughs> for the synchronicities that brought us together, that we're all have become such a wonderful close knit group um, for what all the little reasons that each of us came to the space originally. It's, it's really beautiful. So um, I look forward to, to the next, next round and uh, Mama, did you go yet? I just, I just echo everything you said, and yeah, and yet that's your legacy from um, <laughs> probably your only legacy at this point. No, <laughs> from your papa is the, <laughs> the daily miracle and the daily <laughs> problem. Um, yeah, I thought of him so much today um, with all of the difference, the the joke of the angels, and then at one point, Heidi, when you said um, that now you've reached the point where when you find you know you come up against obstacles you say yeah yeah that was that was also Conrad was always even in the most huge colossal emergencies he would say yeah yeah <laughs> so so it, that made me think of him too so um so and yeah thank you everybody and lots of love and uh, it's just um what a great family yeah Thank you and have a good evening or day and good breakfast for Beatrice. Bye-bye. <laughs>